this video is an introduction to the artist Jim Dime. So let's uh, pull up some information. And then I'll walk you through. So who is Jim Dime? So he's still alive today. Um, he is in his 80s. He was born in... 1930s in, I think it was Cincinnati, Ohio, America. Um, he is known famously for being part of the pop art movement, although he doesn't really classify himself as a pop artist. Um, some people have associated him with neo-dadaism um, and also modernism and elements of abstraction. So as you can see here, as I say, he's still working into his 80s. I think he predominantly lives now in Paris, a place that he's very fond of. And uh, finally got himself a studio a couple of years ago as a permanent sort of residence there where he's producing some of his latest work. Um, so he's most commonly, let's have a look at some of his work, he's most commonly known for uh, this type of stuff, which is his repeating motifs and symbols such as the heart which repeats an awful lot through his work in the 60s and 70s um, very colorful sort of semi-realistic slightly abstracted so this is 1969 so sort of a repeating motif of the heart and if you think about it the heart you know represents many many things love life uh, tenderness fragility and obviously we've got this association with bright, bold pop colours, um, but also this sort of abstract expressionist feel as well. Um, we've got renderings of it in black and white. Uh, another um, repeated motif through Dime's work is the, um, the bathrobe or the dressing gown, which you see an awful lot through his work, which is almost like the embodiment of a self, even though there's nobody in it. It has that sort of structure and sort of uh, grandiose... Of, of being like a portrait almost and as I say it goes right through that one's a one for the Olympics in 1988 that's been used as a repeated motif um, and some of his later work if we help him spell abstraction um, is bordering on complete abstraction so whereas before we have motifs such as the heart that we can see in some of his abstracted pieces like this he just really relies on the formal elements of colour texture um, form, uh, composition and scale, so and he, he mixes things like sand with paint here and glue um, and acrylic and oil and things like that, you know, really powerful canvases. Um, he's known for being a, um, a drawer, uh, a printmaker, a painter, a poet, filmmaker um, and a photographer. Um, he became, as I say, quite famous in the sort of 60s at the time of the pop art movement, which was sort of changing the way of modern art. Um, he became famous as part of a group of artists. Uh, another one was Klaus Oldenburg, and um, it was it was to do with the happenings, which were these sort of almost like filmed installation, uh, sort of, you know, music movement pieces, dance pieces, art pieces, which was sort of quite uh, apt at that period as well. Um, what I particularly wanted to look at is his drawings and his uh, lithographs, which is a form of printmaking. Um, I'm going to look at some of this work here, which is his, uh, his black and white mono work, his tools series from the 1970s. So, you know, these are everyday objects, which I suppose maybe is one of the reasons he is associated with the pop art movement, because obviously they were looking at mass culture, uh, mass manufacture, uh, everyday objects, consumer items. And these objects are the sort of thing that you would find in people's homes, sheds, garages. You know, you've got a, a hand drill, you've got a G clamp, we've got here scissors, uh, and we've got um, like a saw and paintbrushes. Um, I think these are a very honest set of work. I, I prefer these to his colour work. Um, they are pretty much a representation and a rendering of the object themselves. They pretty much say, look, you know, I am a pair of scissors. 
I am a sort of a spanner or a wrench. I know that sounds a bit strange to say, but they are honest in that respect. Um, they're a little bit like a negative or like a sunprint photographically where they just capture the outline um, and, and some of these sort of lithographs have a lovely sort of fine art sense, a little bit like a monoprint where they've got this mottling almost spray effect on here, but almost, as I say, a little bit like a photocopy, like a, a replicant, you know, really clean and really crisp, um, you know, beautiful sort of uh, etching work, lithographic work or pencil work, as you can see here. Really, really nice. Um, and I suppose they are a symbol. Um, they are iconic in their design and they represent the everyday. Uh, and these tools, I think, also have an association with his history because um, I think it was his parents who had uh, a hardware or tool shop back in his hometown. Uh, and I think there's probably an element of sort of harping back to that element of his growing up and, the, and his um, and his childhood, hence the, the, the use of the tools. And also, I think the tools are part of the making process. So when you think of an artist, you know, we think of, um, oh, there we go, um, we think of brushes, yeah, um, you know, as a sculptor, uh, as a maker, uh, we think of tools as being part of that sort of self-personality element, really. So these are the pieces of work that I wanted to concentrate on from a practical perspective um, and move, obviously, towards uh, a food point of view um, and replace these with... Um, items um, which are iconic and everyday but would you would expect to find in a kitchen for fruit, uh, food preparation so it's taking that influence from the work of dine but then personalizing it um, if we think about assessment objective four it's that personal response rather than purely just copies but that's maybe where we start to understand the technique so if we look at these images here which i've selected I've tried to pick three pieces that represent different elements of the techniques. And the first one we're going to have a look at is this one here, where you're going to either freehand draw from selections of objects that I've presented to you, uh, kitchen uh, catering objects. You're going to freehand draw or trace, if you need that support, um, uh, the outline of one of those objects, and then do the same again but then in the second version, really observe and pick out um, and render tonally to the best of your ability um, some of the key elements within that object that pretty much identify it to be that object. So I am a hammer. Um, they want to be crisp. They want to be clean around the edges as the item would be. You know, if you run your hand around something as um, uh, sort of hard surfaced as a hammer, uh, then you know you wouldn't expect it to be fluffy or rough. You know you've got those clean edges on that. So that's the first one. So it's tracing the object or drawing the object twice with an accurate rendering, and then on the second version, really picking out a couple of elements that you think are interesting tonally to give a little bit more form to that. Um, the key element for this really is uh, making sure that they are sharp. Um, as I say, they are clean, and you know if your object has elements of metal on there that you capture with your smoothness, maybe a gradated tonal shading approach, maybe some blending sticks, soft pencil, and then hard edge outlining, that you really capture that really good element there, a realism. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Um, other one here, um, either working from some stencils that we provide you, or making your own stencil is to pick another um, appropriate object to render or trace that out and then to move that object, maybe showing another element or, or angle of that object, uh, retrace or draw that and then do that two or three times to show almost a sense of movement in the object. What we could use is um, charcoal or black chalk or very, very soft pencil on a template if you've cut one of these out maybe on cartridge or on plastic to um, to actually sort of push against the edge uh, with your pastel almost like you would do with um, a, a letter template something like that so brushing it away and then taking it away so you've got that that sort of positive and negative space so when you're drawing any of these 
think about it in negative drawing sense. So you're not drawing the object. Think about the space around it here. That might help you render that drawing. So what shape have we got here, here, around here? So you know, look up negative space drawing. That might help you. And then this one over here on the left, we might approach that one with a mono print, or that could be um, a combination of charcoal. Um, and maybe some splatter paint as well like that. But we're just trying to capture two or three elements, but focusing on food utensils. Okay, so that's the introduction into Jim Dine. Um, uh, I expect you to go off and do some additional research on his influences, uh, the materials you use, a little bit more contextual, uh, and then that will support the practical work as well. And you could extend that even further by photographing your own food related items and then doing some individual observational drawings just picking out elements cropping them zooming in and doing some real good study work from there okay thank you very much